Okay, part two at this point. Uh, it's still the 15th of July. It's Friday. And the time is too damn early in the morning. It usually is. It's about 1.15 in the morning. So, here I am at a Blue Cross. Around the building is about to be destroyed at this point over here. Proposal of Rams build, uh, Rams Training Center. So, back to it. 9-11 hit. I had a cubicle, open air cubicle, looking out. And wondering if we're going to get nailed or not by any planes now. We're on second level. Kind of fear sticks with you all that time, and it changed my behavior entirely in that place. I mean entirely. I didn't know what the hell was... Uh, I wasn't feeling safe during that time. It took me about a year, year and a half to get unsafe. Actually, to feel safe. Or well, ready to be backstabbed anyway by, uh, by corporate. When we had Blue Day, this was like in March or April, and I was still feeling the after effects of 9-11. They wanted to do like fishes and, and, and the sea, and they were trying to decorate most of the area to look like it. I had to go submarine. I had to go submarine at this point over here. I used up way too much of the company toner and paper for my construction. Not to mention cardboard. I I grabbed from every place I could just to get this construction going on. As long as I was doing my work, as long as I was doing my job, it was no problem, right? There's a lot of staples too, a lot of tape. I created bulkheads, metal bulkheads with rivets in them. The images of them folded, stapled, taped, till I had about chains of them. And where my cubicle was at during this time, I was facing forward. And I had a side wall. I had a front wall. And I had open clearing behind me. But everybody down had actually cabinet space. Above cabinet space they can grab stuff out of. But me, I'm facing a wall. I'm facing open air. On my left here. I can see everybody else's cubicles. I can see the break room that we actually are getting built and built and where food gets stolen. We get plenty of coffee as long as we keep making a damn thing. As long as we have enough coffee to make anything. thing. If not, we're screwed. And right in front of my area there, was, there would be an access way to get to the elevators. So in order to celebrate this Blue Day, I decided to screw this noise. I mean, I arrived after Christmas. I decorated the area at Christmas, and then now I get to decorate the area. And no, actually, I decorated my own smaller area beforehand, but then moved over to this area for some time, and then moved back again. I mean, I don't know what was with the corporate. I kept bouncing us from place to place. About during this time, I uh, I made my submarine. I said before, on the back walls, on the front walls, I had made bulkheads. Riveted bulkheads, but yes, I did. Make sure everything else was lined up perfectly at this point over here. Cardboard tubing makes interesting uh, constructions. I was trying to figure out a way how to make a periscope that I can actually look through it around my area. And I actually did. Two mirrors. Two mirrors. 
carefully fitted where one is concave convex facing this way but the images will be downwards and I'm looking at an image of a mirror about two I'm looking at here and the hand is angled right that would be the uh, image I'm looking at so I had that mounted I can see it down towards any other area I can sh I can turn it gently and I made torpedoes I had downloaded sounds of a tor of a submarine anything and everything about the submarine I had it I couldn't just go like a uh, yellow submarine and the damn thing no no I did the United States Navy and the damn thing and when it came down for the hot when it came down for the costumes I dressed up in costume tried to be authentic to a point but not quite I even named my submarine and I had a decorations for it too but I also had made a memorial wall for 9-11 as well it was my tribute the only thing I could do to memorialize what had happened I poured all my creativity into this damn thing I mean it would have been working well for 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 a Halloween but this was like in the middle this is like in the uh, first quarter of the year and I had to take it down after a while but I loved it I loved being that creative about it. Every time a Halloween would come up, there would have to be something I had to do with it to decorate it. In the last year I had, I was decorating my area into a pirate situation. I was going to go decorate scary showers. Just feeling lousy and scary. Scary dogs and stuff like that. All the pirate stuff I had. Well, I lost that stuff too a long time ago. A lot of good stuff I lost. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good memories. And it sucks when I start thinking about the San Fernando Valley and about things I used to live with and used to appreciate and didn't really really appreciate it until they were gone sucks when you take things for granted especially the things I took for granted and the people I took for granted I tried to do my best I guess it wasn't meant to be Some people actually cared about it, and other people had gone away. There was one young lady who worked there for a time. Actually, she was about the same age I was. Now she's trying to get her fame out there, let's write by writing books and having her own podcast. And this time, interviewing people left and right in the literature world. So she's getting her name out there. Sherry Labinovitz. I'm sorry, Rabinovitz. That's been. Her father worked at a different department, but at the same level, a second level. They both worked at Blue Cross. He died. And our department showed up. He was part of our department. We didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. But he was part of our department, so was she. I keep in contact with her every once in a while to see how she's doing. She 
she's in her own little career situation. She wanted to be a published writer. She chased it and she accomplished it. And more so. Me, I'm a schlub. This time I'm dealing with the grieving situation. You know, you shove everything else you can regarding your grief and your pain away. And then you try to live the sunshine. You try to live like that. And for some people it may be easy. It used to be easy for me a long time ago. But it got older and older and worse and worse. That <sighs> The stigma that still sticks around me. Like, damn Albatross, it just won't leave. I just get rid of it and it still pops right back around the neck again. The Cameron curse. Laugh if you will. I probably would have laughed a long time ago until I kept looking at the data and looking back at the memories and then thinking oh my shit. Oh my god. you got to be kidding me. This can't be real. This can't be real. I mean my brother may, he may have psyched himself on this shit. Probably made me psych himself on my shit. But it seemed like for the Cameron males in our bloodline, all the uncles had died well past the age of 60. Well past the age of 60. But once they were actually, when they reached 60, that's, that was the doom for them right there. Uncle Bill was beyond 60 when he died. 60, 61. We had another uncle committed suicide right after 60. Another one died of cancer. Another one died of heart condition. My brother, the thing of it is, he was part Texan, part Cameron. We couldn't figure this shit out. I couldn't figure this shit out. It was a worth. It was a shaw. He had shop blood in him, but he also had Cameron blood in him, which probably made him deal with the damn curse right there. So at the age of 60 at this point over here, I'm waiting for one of my older cousins to drop off, because if he's going to be still alive past 60, then it's got to be bunk. But if he dies past 60, then I know it's real. I mean, once he reaches the 60, it starts counting down. When my brother turns 60 in May... It was only about a couple of months later that he started getting the strokes. And then he started getting the, the effects of them. So in the age of the year, the year of 60 for him, that's when he died. And my brother, when he kept figuring this shit out, he was telling me about it. Because it's like a forewarning. My middle name is Cameron. I, I am a Cameron. I'm a weaver. But I don't know if that's going to be strong enough for anything. My mother was Cameron, but it only affected the males. That's what my brother kept trying to tell me. So that's why I kept looking at things differently these days. But I got to look at it either as hope or as ridiculous as it sounds. I got a few years left before I die. And if it is, there's nothing I can do about it. But if I can continue on and just do the best I can and... If nothing happens until the age of 61, and then after 61, we'll see what happens. Because after that, I don't know. Maybe try to go for another career or something? Even at, at, at that age? Will I still be mentally able to do so? Will I be physically enough to, to do something? And those are years off. I've got another half year to go before the birthday kicks in. It's got me a little concerned. It's got me more than concerned. Because it gets me closer and now i got to start worrying about it. Anxiety. Freaking me out left and right. My brother, when he found out that he was going to be turning 50, uh... 
he freaked out and he went insane. Because he didn't want to turn 50. He realized some of the information that was told to him by other people concerning about the quote-unquote Cameron curse. I still kept a dis the disparaging thought in my head saying, it's bullshit. You know, it's got to be bullshit. It's got to be bullshit. It's got to be bullshit. got to be bullshit. Until my brother died. Now, I don't know. But I can't keep letting it sabotage me left and right. It's just got to keep going day by day. And day by day, sometimes I'm dealing with the depression, and it's still kicking my ass, and I've still got this weird-ass sleep routine going on. That's why I'm still doing the zombie shit. That's why I'm still doing all these damn zombie videos and pointing them out there left and right. It's not that I'm, eh, zombie requires brain. Screw that noise. Zombie requires sleep. Yes, I need that. I haven't slept in about six to eight hours straight. You know, there's usually six to eight hours a body's supposed to have I haven't had that for years. I know we move from Blue Cross and we do this. Uh, we do this, sleep. What can I say? What can I say? There's a poster. There's pictures out there concerning about how to turn a, a former place into a different new place. Maybe I'll get a chance to see it within my lifetime. Or not. But the one thing I'd like to see right now is the inside of my eyelids right now. So if you don't mind, I'm going to shut this off. Crawl into bed. Let's see if I can get some sleep tonight. <laughs>